Scott Cawthon was heartbroken. He'd just released his latest video game online, and had been hoping that maybe this time he'd have made something that people cared about. The response was not positive. For the most part, his cute animal game had been completely ignored by gamers, and those who'd given it a try were less than complimentary. One particularly mean review for his game said that the character models were really creepy, like some kind of terrifying animatronic. Scott thought long and hard about that comment, before gaining resolve to keep trying. If people thought his work was scary while he was trying to make children's games, they hadn't seen anything yet. Scott Cawthon loved making video games. It had been his creative outlet for years. Since he was 16, he'd been fascinated with building his own small gaming titles that he'd circulate online for people to try out. Scott worked hard at game design, and found a rhythm that worked well for him. He didn't like to spend years working on the same project, so he found that short, simple titles worked best for his attention span and his sense of accomplishment. Scott would release a couple of games a year, taking joy in the process of completing a project, and immediately moving the skills that he'd learned onto a brand new title. A lot of Scott's games drew inspiration from his Christian beliefs. He felt, to a certain extent, that these games were a way for him to spread his faith, helping children around the world to learn more about the Bible. If anything, it was a fun alternative to long hours spent reading from a dusty book. It was a hard thing to describe, this idea that he was gaining inspiration on game design from an unseen force, and there were plenty of people who'd ridicule it, but Scott couldn't help but feel that he was meant to do this. Every time Scott released a game, he'd enjoy a brief period of excitement at seeing how people reacted. After years and years of work, though, he slowly found himself struggling to keep going. Family commitments became greater, as Scott had to balance game creation around a full-time job and time spent with his children. He wasn't as young as he'd once been, and he no longer had the luxury of spending days on end working on his gaming projects. With this drain on his time came greater desperation. Scott was finding it harder and harder to justify the time he was spending on his games, when they weren't proving successful, and they weren't making any money. For a time, he felt very lonely. He'd spent years attempting to build something that shared God's teachings, if only in his own special way, but he didn't feel like he was getting anything in return. Throughout all this time, he'd always felt that God was pleased with what he was doing, but after so many years, and with so many other pressures on his time, he wasn't sure if he could feel that reassurance anymore. Quite aside from anything else, it was disheartening to see people ignore his games time and time again. What was he doing wrong? Why couldn't anyone see the hard work he'd put into his games? Above all, how, in an increasingly busy and crowded online world, could he even hope to compete for attention among others? The final straw came when Scott received some hurtful comments from one reviewer. His art style simply didn't make for an enjoyable experience. And so Scott quit. He'd had enough. He had too many other things to do, and he was tired of struggling to find time for making games when he could be focusing on his family, and earning the money he needed to support them. Time to grow up and face the facts, he was never going to succeed as a game developer. Except, Scott really couldn't stop himself. He had a passion that drove him, and had been his primary purpose for existing over so many years. He didn't know what he was if he wasn't a game developer and he couldn't bring himself to stop thinking of game ideas. The more Scott thought about it, the more he realised that he shouldn't be making games for anyone but himself. A few negative comments shouldn't be the end of the world, because it really didn't matter what others thought. Whether Scott was making games for an audience of millions, or whether he was simply making them for his own kids, it didn't matter. What mattered was making games. And with that, Scott felt impressed that God was pleased with his decision to continue making games. This time, though, he got the feeling that he should try something different. Maybe there was a good game he could make that didn't feature a Christian theme. Scott began thinking more about the negative comments he'd received. If people thought his designs were scary, why not use that? Why not make a simple horror game and see how well that turned out? To Scott's surprise, this was actually a lot of fun, if a bit creepy. A few times while programming, he managed to scare himself as character models jumped out at times he wasn't expecting. It was all he could do to apologise to his family for shrieking while staring intently at his computer. After only a few months of work, Scott finished his new game, Five Nights at Freddy's. He felt pleased with the game. He'd got a lot of his frustration out of his system, and made something that wasn't his usual style, but that he could ultimately be proud of. 
He happily launched the game, the same as all his others, and immediately began thinking about his next project. After all, Scott wasn't going to stop here. He'd achieved his goal of making a new game, and he'd learned that the process of making games were their own reward. It didn't matter what people thought of his attempts at horror. Except, well, it didn't matter what people thought, but as it turned out, they thought his new game was pretty good. Scott watched in wonder and awe as the internet exploded with admiration for his little indie game. He couldn't keep up with it. The game was an instant smash hit. Finally, everything he'd worked towards over the past decades made sense. He felt like he'd been led to this, and that while he'd had plenty of trials along the way, they'd all been designed to help him succeed in his goal of becoming a world-renowned game developer. Each and every one of us will face moments like Scott did on his darkest day. We'll be encouraged to quit, to give up, and to move on. Sometimes, that might be the right thing to do, and it's up to us to spot those moments. But it's important for us all to remember that we can only succeed if we keep going. Above all, we need to push ourselves, not for some great, impossible future, but out of a love of what we create, and the skills that we learn. When we can be happy with the process of growing and developing, we'll find that we truly succeed.